Hello and welcome back to Broadside Gaming with me, Zug. And today we're not going through a build guide. We're going for a general guide of how to play Dark Tide, but better. You know, I've been looking a lot on the Steam forums and the Facebook groups and things, and it just seems to be aspects of the game that people don't quite understand. And uh, so we're going to go through them. Uh, the main thing people don't seem to be grasping, or newer players don't seem to quite understand because it's not explained amazingly well, is coherency. Now this is one of the most important mechanics within the game, and this will probably be why a lot of people are taking so much damage and you know dying a lot. So we'll have a look at the talents, and we'll see some examples of this. But coherency is basically your squad staying together and for that you get buffed so as you can see here uh linchpin toughness replenishment while in coherence is increased by 50 percent each class has a different aura and ability for you know being in coherency with each other or just together so, for example, I'm running a melee ogrin right now, so it's Bonebreaker's Aura. 10% heavy melee attack damage for you and allies in coherency. This is an augmented version of Intimidating Presence. And there's, like, each class gives something else. But these buffs are all stacking. So, when you're together, it's you're going to have a lot more survivability. You are literally stripping away your survivability by being outside of your team so you know stay together you will always have that one person every now and again that just runs off and they'll be instantly grabbed or downed by a pox hound a trapper or just an unlucky hit from a mauler but if you're together that's less likely to happen so you know coherency folks very very important don't just run off on your own if you're playing on lower difficulties this is slightly less important but if you're wanting to play damnation or damnation plus in the Uruk missions this becomes incredibly important because you will literally just kill your team if you run off on your own so yeah keep that in mind and something else people haven't quite grasped yet is um, sort of situational awareness so just keeping your ear out for audible cues like if there's a pox hound coming you'll hear it howl if there's a trapper coming you'll hear it mumbling to itself every special so every one of these maniac specials and the ogrins generally have an audible cue to tell you that they're coming. So just be aware. And they're, they're very obvious to what they are. You know, the, the mutants will do their really annoying owl. And bombers will jingle and they'll mumble to themselves as well. It's just something you need to, like, learn. So what else? Let's go through prioritizing targets. So for each of this, so for prioritizing targets, it's slightly different for each class. All right, so as, as an Ogryn, you're going to be generally in the thick of things, even if you're all um, a gun lugger Ogryn and you're ranged. Most of the time, as an Ogryn, your priorities will be Rages, Crushers, Bulwarks, and then going down. Obviously, if there's a Sniper, you want to try and kill it as quick as you can, because that thing will pick you off. Each class has different weapons that are good at using it. The Ogryn, uh, the Kickback has an incredibly ridiculous range on it so does the, the so do the ripper guns and you can generally just aim high and kill it quite quickly 
but it is all about prioritizing targets. You, there is no big prize for who can kill the most trash, like poxwalkers or dregs. These maniacs and the ogrins are generally what's going to be killing you. Obviously, rager packs as well. They're very unpleasant to deal with. And they're usually the thing you have to deal with first if they appear, because they will just tear you apart. But it is just prioritizing what is going to down you, really. And let's get on to kind of what we hit on with the coherency, but it's also managing, you know, the speed of the run. Like I said, there will be some people who try to run off ahead and do things as quick as they can. Quick, 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 quick. But that isn't always helpful. Yes, the faster you can complete a run means the more runs you can do, which means the more crafting materials you get, which means you can make better gear, so on and so forth. But if you're going too fast, you're not clearing the stuff behind you. You're not being aware of what is happening around you. And you're going to cause more monstrosities and packs to spawn. Which isn't really talked about. But there are set pace timers for monsters spawning as you go through the map. So if you're just pushing on when there's still a horde behind you or there's still specials around you will just trigger more stuff to spawn and you'll get overwhelmed. So, you know, you, you kind of need to manage how fast you're going. Yes, there are some people who will be like, oh yeah, I know, I carry teams and stuff. It's like, okay, cool. You can carry a team. But also you have to kind of work within your team's capability at that time. Because one unlucky, unlucky poxhound or trapper, it's going to screw you over. So, and with, say, let's go with a bit more onto the awareness side of it. So, when you are fighting, and I've been trying to get Ugg to believe this for a very long time, but it does happen, and it's very difficult to get on camera, but when you're fighting, if something is about to hit you from behind or outside of your field of vision, there is a whooshing or a sucking of air sound from behind you, which means you can dodge away. And also, blocking is a 360 degree arc. So you hear that sound, you can block and then dodge sideways or backwards or just any way. As soon as you hear that, move instantly from where you are standing, because it means you're about to get slapped in the back of the head. And as you can see, blocking does take up stamina. Each class has a different stamina level. Each weapon has a different stamina break to it. But generally, if you hear that sound, block and dodge backwards if you can. Or dodge sideways, just dodge. Dodging is incredibly important in this game. It will keep you alive. In most fights, you don't just want to be standing here. Just randomly swinging. If you can, fight them and keep moving. Even if it's just moving around, circle strafing. Because then you can try and corral them all up into one pile and just cleave through them. You never want to be standing still. Because that is how you get hit. That is how you get cornered. So if you can keep moving and dodging, then do it, really. There are far too many instances that I've seen recently of people... They'll get into a fight... They'll run up to something, and then they'll just... It seems like they take their hands off the keyboard and just sort of do that. It's You're going to get killed doing it. So the best way to do it really is to just try to keep dodging. Push when you can. 
You know, you've always got those follow-up attacks if you played Vermintide. It's the uh, block push. Some weapons are built for doing that, like the uh, billy clubs. For example, Skullcracker. More damage if you stagger them. And staggering is really good, you know. It puts them off their uh, off their swings. So, you know, if you can kind of do that, it will help out. So it's kind of um, you know the, the the basic movement and general awareness you kind of need to get yourself into, but it also does help if you obviously have a decent build. You know, meta builds are meta for a reason. You don't have to use them, but they are generally built because they are the strongest at that time. And then we get down to weapons and loadout. I mean, this is this this will just come down to practice, really. You know, you'll find a build and weapons you like, and you'll get better at using them. You'll figure out if there's any sort of clever ways to use them, like, uh, say, for the, the kickback on the Ogryn, because I'm just using this as an example because this is what I'm on. You know, it looks like a, a short-range shotgun, but it's actually got quite a lot of range on it, and even at incredibly long range, it will stagger and knock things over. So there's always little things you can kind of work on and kind of eke out on builds you know you just you just learn the sort of ebb and flow of the different weapons and that will just come with time you know time and practice you're not going to be super amazing the minute you get into it but it is very important that you work on say the the four main things really it's sticking together working on your situational awareness prioritizing targets and sort of managing how fast you're going and when some and also this is a slightly not so cool thing but it's something you have to do occasionally if a teammate is downed don't kill yourself trying to pick them up. You know, clear out the worst specials first that they're going to, you know, tear you to pieces before you try and get them up again. You know, if they're netted, then yeah, just grab them as quick as you can because you can unnet people very quickly. But if they're downed, that is a few seconds of you having to stand there completely vulnerable to do that. And you can mistime it and get yourself downed as well so if somebody is downed obviously make sure it is safe before you try and get them back up again because there's you're not going to help the team by getting yourself killed as well so what else is there as I said there's the defense stuff so listen for the the sound from behind to the whoosh. Dodge as much as you can. And remember, you have a push block attack. So block, push, hit. And you can always use that to make room and pull back. It's really good for giving yourself some room to move around, hit. It will make space for you, really. But yeah, this is just some advice, really, for newer players that maybe don't know some of the nuances or haven't really played through Vermintide or the other games where this kind of gameplay was far more critical, really. Uh, Dark Tide has made it slightly not easier. But because of the hybridized style of combat, it's not as critical as it was in Vermintide, where it was all about the melee. So 
so you can for example force uh, gunners and things into suppression you know if they're firing at you you just fire back at them and that generally will force them behind cover to give yourself some a uh, few seconds to move up or if they won't if you don't have enough suppression on your weapon you can uh, flank round charge into them and that will force them to stop shooting so this is kind of just some advice to move on from say being a beginner to sort of intermediate and if you want to head into damnation and that sort of stuff this is, these are kind of the things you need to be aware of and work on i mean nobody's going to play perfectly but this is the stuff you kind of need to be aware of as you're playing so i hope this has helped folks and if it has you know please like subscribe hit that little bell for notifications it really does help us out and if i come up with anything else then i'll make another video so until then thank you very much for watching and i'll see you folks later